All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining Autism Speaks as we present part three of our Navigating the New Autism Diagnosis Series. This is the final series, and we're so grateful that each of you have been able to, if you were able to join us in the last two sessions. Uh, but don't fret if you were not, because we will be sharing uh, the videos from uh, part one and part two in our follow-up email. So again, thank you. Uh, we're so excited uh, again to be with each of you and thank you so much for uh, joining us and taking time out of your busy schedules. My name is Janet Williams and I am joined by Mary Ann Sullivan. Uh, we are both outreach directors for Autism Speaks, but more importantly, we're also parents of sons who have an autism diagnosis. Uh, autism diagnosis. And today I will be serving as your host. Uh, we also have another outreach director, Colleen Shen, uh, who you will hear from later, and she'll be assisting us throughout this webinar. Uh, and we're so, again, so excited. So we understand that autism affects the way a person may perceive the world and may, you know, their communication, their social interactions may uh, become difficult or they may engage in repetitive behaviors. But we also know that symptoms and the severity, it varies across these core areas. But if taken together, they may result in relatively mild changes for some, and then also some challenges uh, for others. Um, you know, symptoms can sometimes be more severe uh, with lack of spoken language, uh, and it may interfere with everyday life. So it's imperative that you have as much resources as possible. And so tonight, we're going to be talking specifically about all of the amazing resources that we have available here at Autism Speaks to help you in your journey. And so I am going to now turn it over uh, to Mary Ann, who's going to share a little bit of more information, some house keeping information and other information that will be helpful uh, for tonight's program. Thank you, Janet. Welcome, everyone. I'm going to take a moment to read the Autism Speaks mission because this is very, very important to us. It's what all of our work, our initiatives, um, some of the important uh, programs that we're delivering, they all come and stand by our mission. Autism Speaks is dedicated <clears throat> to promoting solutions across the spectrum and throughout the lifespan for the needs of individuals with autism and their families. Number of ways that we do this is through advocacy and support, increasing understanding and acceptance of people with autism and advancing researches, research into the cause and better in interventions for autism spectrum disorder. On a very important note, fine. Uh, oh, you want me to? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> On a very important note, diversity, in equity, and access and inclusion are all very important parts of our organization's culture at, uh, at Autism Speaks. It's led by our president, Angela Geiger, by our CEO, our national board, as well as the senior leadership team. We strive <clears throat> to provide a sense of belonging for our staff and for all the many diverse constituents in which we serve. So a few housekeeping items. I wanna let everybody know that we will be recording this session and we have some, uh, I'd say, at a number of truly great resources for you that we will be sharing in a follow-up email. Uh, I know last time I promised it the, ne the next day and um, that did not happen. So I'm going to say that by Friday, you will have a follow-up email uh, with the recordings as well as lots of good resources for you. Um, we will have a Q&A at the end of the session. I'm not, I'm not sure that depending on how long our speakers talk, whether or not we're going to get to everyone's question. We will try to get to questions. If we don't, we will have the autism response team uh, get back to you and answer your question for you. We're going to use the chat function as a way to deliver information to you. And Colleen Shin, who Janet already introduced, will be the person who will be monitoring that chat box. And so uh, if you could please uh, take the information from the chat box that you want to hear about, we're also going to be uh, introducing the speakers and their bios through the chat box. We're really, we wanna make sure that the time that we have, we put to good use. And so you'll get that information, it'll just be in other ways. 
Okay. Is that good, Janet? Did I miss anything? No, you did not. Well, thank you so much, Marianne. I appreciate that. Uh, again, uh, we are so excited and we are going to introduce some amazing speakers that we have for you on this evening. These are some of our incredible colleagues uh, and they are going to talk about, again, some of the amazing resources that we have at Autism Speaks. And so our first speaker is Dr. Pamela Dixon. Dixon. She is the Director of Clinical Services and Inclusion, uh, and she's going to be talking talking about our caregiver skills training uh, for families of children with developmental disorders or delays and how this impactful program is culturally competent to meet the needs of families across the globe. So Pam, I will now turn it over to you. Thank you, Janet. And thank you so much for organizing this series, you and Marianne. And um, so I want to start off by just saying that before I worked with Autism Speaks, I worked as a clinician, I'm a psychologist, and I worked in um, hospital clinics um, in doing assessment of children with neurodevelopmental disorders. And so in that process, I've been around long enough to, um, to know what it's like to explain a diagnosis to a caregiver, to a parent, when there's insurance coverage available for services, um, as well as what it's like once there is insurance co coverage for services. But despite how many resources there are available to a family, um, usually the initial need is for a caregiver, a parent to have something that they can use the next day um, in order to be able to um, you know, interact with their child differently. And uh, it, it has broken my heart in those situations where caregivers had to wait on waiting lists or where resources were not available, because I've also had some uh, experience doing work in other um, settings and low resource settings in countries where there are no autism um, interventions available. And so I know how hard it is for caregivers when there are no resources. And so I'm very happy to be working um, with Autism Speaks and um, focusing on the caregiver skills training program because it is specifically for um, caregivers, parents. So we can go on to the, um, the next slide where I'm gonna tell you at a glance uh, more about this program. It was developed by Autism Speaks in partnership with the World Health Organization. And it is part of the um, World Health Organization's mission um, to make sure that they are providing quality evidence-based care uh, across different diagnoses. And so that's part of their MH gap or mental health gap action program. Um, but just in, in summary, um, the purpose of the of CST, as we call it, is to give caregivers, meaning parents and other family members, with skills that can be used on a day-to-day -day basis in everyday home routines that will promote social communication. And so far, we've implemented this program in more than uh, 30 countries. It was designed so that it can be adapted to make, to of course be translated, but also to be um, culturally competent and specific and relevant. Um, and it's, it was also designed so that it can be integrated into a system of care. So not just as a standalone one organization, but integrated into a health system. So we can go to the next slide. So I have um, pulled some images, illustrations right from the materials so that you can get a sense of what they look like, what it looks like. Um, but the purpose of the program is to help. So this comes right from the, the guide that caregivers have. Um, the purpose um, as explained in the guide is to help your child learn to use gestures and words to communicate, to spend more time in shared engagement, to use uh, appropriate behavior more often and to learn new skills. And so the focus really is on these four areas, helping parents with strategies that they can use every day to um, increase communication, social interactions, um, appropriate behavior and uh, the development of new skills. So throughout the presentation, I wanna give you information about the program uh, but also I wanna leave you with some, some tips that you can use. So we'll go to the next slide, please. 
So I want to talk about, I'm very excited about the work that we've done um, with CST in the U.S. I know I mentioned that we've done, we've uh, implemented the program in more than 30 countries. Um, and that includes the U.S. So we have three sites um, that have implemented the program in the United States, one in New Jersey. And we also have a program in New York. Uh, through the Charles B. Warm Community Health Center. And we have a, our newest partnership is with Easter Seals Midwest, where a CST is being implemented in Missouri in rural populations. So CST, as I mentioned, has been, uh, it was designed so that it can be integrated into health systems. And that is what has happened in the US as well. Um, it's flexible and it can be, you know, in, in countries where there are no autism services, it may be the only thing that is available and as other services are being developed and as the um, professional um, community is being taught and in, in receiving training. In a, in a context such as the US where there are more resources, uh, the way that it's being used and the way these three organizations have used it is to um, have it available for families who are, when you're on a waiting list, so you can get this training as you wait for more intensive one-on-one -on -one interventions. And then they're also, um, one of our partners is also using it to go alongside one-to-one. -one. So they're doing, they're having families use CST in groups um, at the same time that they're doing one-on-one -on -one intervention. And we're really excited to be introducing new sites in uh, 2021. And um, I'll tell you a little more about that as we go through, but you can um, advance the slide, please. So let me give you a summary of what it is about. So caregiver uh, skills training is for caregivers, parents of children who are ages two to nine, who have a developmental delay or disorder, um, including autism. A diagnosis is not required though. And the reason for this is that we want uh, caregivers want parents to have this information as soon as they have concern. And we know that oftentimes there are waiting lists to just get an evaluation for diagnosis. So a diagnosis is not required and it's the material is appropriate for a parent who has concern about autism or any other developmental delay or disorder. And the way that it is done is in group sessions, nine of nine group sessions that are typically um, held in the community, like at a community center, a clinic. We've also been doing it remotely and that's been working very well. Um, and it's combined with three home visits at the beginning, the middle and the end, so that the trainer visits the family either in person at their home or remotely at their home so that they can have a more, a better sense of the child individually. Um, because the group during the group sessions, that's just for parents to come together and learn and support one another. Okay, next slide. The content of CST um, is focused on um, behavioral approaches for promoting shared engagement and communication. So it's based on um, um, applied behavior analysis and the naturalistic behavioral interventions that are related to ABA, such as JASPER, PRT, discrete trial training, which um, if you have a new diagnosis or are just curious about diagnosis are good approaches to research to learn more about uh, different ways of uh, providing services for children with autism. It's also highly um, inclusive of positive parenting approaches um, for promoting behavior management and managing challenging behavior. Uh, it includes, as I mentioned, home visits. And then woven throughout all of the sessions is a promotion of caregiver well being. We know that, um, you know, we value the health, mental, and physical of caregivers as individuals, as well as caregivers of children and other family members. And so the it's emphasized the, and, and parents are given strategies for how to um, attend to their own needs while um, meeting the needs of others. So um, it's okay to forward. And I won't go through this in uh, tedious detail, but I want to, you can go ahead and forward through all of the steps. Um, I have this here because I want you to see how the, the content builds upon itself. 
So the arrow across the bottom, you know, lists it has uh, icons for the home visits as well as those nine group sessions that I mentioned. And the first couple of sessions are focused on getting um, teaching parents how to get children engaged, how to keep them engaged, um, and then th the ways that they can do that through play and home routines, things you're already doing at home. Um, and then there are uh, sessions on specifically on ways to promote communication, manage behavior, teach skills, and of course, um, caregiver well-being. And so I'm going to give you some tips. I want to leave you with some practical things that you that can be done um, at home and across some of these areas. So we can move to the next slide. Um, so I mentioned that the foundation is getting and keeping children engaged. Um, and so the idea is that we recognize that a particularly for children with autism, that it's often really parents often struggle with with uh, being able to capture uh, attention and keep it of their child and, and to keep them engaged. And so we provide some strategies and this is again, pulled directly from the materials. Um, the, the first uh, strategy that I wanna share is the importance of setting up the environment so that you will be more likely to interact with your child. So moving distractions, making uh, the, the, um, the place that you want to do your play um, routine a uh, safe place to interact. So you'll notice in the pictures, you can see that the um, there's an adult sitting across the table. It's important to be face to, to face, um, to move away uh, furniture um, or distractions, uh, to turn off the television. We can move to the next slide. Also to notice what a child is motivated in. You see in this picture, the parent, the caregiver is the first picture. She's looking at to see what he's interested in. And that's what you want to focus on, what the child is interested in. And also the importance of praise, right? So we can move to the next slide. I'm gonna to try to go through these quickly. Um, it's important to join in uh, a routine by imitating what your child is doing. If it's an appropriate thing to imitate, it can be very simple. This is a way to keep a child engaged. So here, you know, the child is is putting like a block in a box. The adult does the same thing to imitate. So these are things that you can do to keep a, ch a, a child engaged. We can move to the next slide. Um, I'm, I will uh, go through these very quickly. We in communication, we focus on ways children communicate. There are many different ways. Verbal, of course. Let's move to the next slide as well as nonverbal. So using gestures, eye contact. Um, so parents are taught ways to, um, to use these, uh, to recognize these ways that children are communicating. So let's move to the next slide and the next, sorry. Be, uh, because I, what I want to kind of cap our communication discussion is that a parent, we want parents to recognize when children are communicating and then respond at their level. So um, it's really common for parents to, to talk more than is necessary or more than a child can take in. So for example, if you have a child who is only using one word, is quiet or only using one word regularly, then you wanna match it and then just do a little bit more. So they're using one word consistently, you use one or two words. They're using two, you use two or three. Um, so that the child's not over, overwhelmed with language. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Sorry to rush through. I have this here again. We can just quickly go through it uh, because I wanted you to um, to see to emphasize that we can go through cycle through the 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 rest of it. Thank you. Uh, so we talked just a little bit quickly on engagement and communication, but I also wanna emphasize that there are sessions on behavior and specifically on helping to manage challenging behavior. We know that for many of you, this is the main reason or was one of the main reasons that you decided to um, seek an evaluation for diagnosis in the first place. So there's coverage of how to manage this. There's coverage of how to teach daily living skills as well. Um, so we can go to the next slide. Um, if, if 
just to, to give you more information, you can go to our YouTube channel where we have six animations that are focused on CST and discuss CST. Um, and uh, we call them CST uh, quick tip videos. So you can go to the Autism Speaks website for that. Um, we have new sites coming for CST and the US um, in 2021. And we also are very pleased to, to say that we are going to field test, meaning we're going to test out a new e-learning platform where you'll be able to access it online and go through it in a self-guided way. Um, and so by the end of this year, we should have, we should be finished with the testing of that and be able to freely release it. Um, so if you, um, if you are a parent who is interested um, in learning more, or if you're um, a professional and are uh, perhaps interested in CST in your clinic, please do uh, be in touch with me and I can uh, provide you with more information. Thank you very much. And I'll be here for questions. Thank you so much, Pam, for sharing all of that wonderful information with our families. I'm sure that they will find it helpful. Uh, and again, she mentioned our uh, Autism Speaks YouTube channel where you can find additional resources there, uh, but feel free to reach out to her as you see her email address uh, listed there if you have additional questions. So now we're gonna move forward and we're going to welcome Angie Fidelli. Uh, Angie is our Director of Operations uh, for our clinical programs. And she she is going to introduce us to the Autism Learning Health Network and all the many benefits uh, to the community. So Angie, I'm gonna let you take it from here. Thank you. Great, hi everyone. I'm so excited to be here. So thank you for having me. Um, I am focusing currently on one of our programs in Autism Speaks that's under our clinical programs department under our, our full science department. And so today I'm gonna to focus on the Autism Learning Health Network. The mission of the network is that all individuals with autism spectrum disorder will have optimal physical health and quality of life. Um, you guys are probably wondering what is a learning health network. So a learning health network is a um, network of, for us, the Autism Learning Health Network is a network of um, academic medical institutions and autism centers across North America. And uh, one of the great things about the Autism Learning Health Network is that rather than waiting for individual clinicians to hear of new treatments and gradually incorporate them into everyday practice, um, a learning health network is constantly monitoring its activities, determining what works and what doesn't work and accelerating the adoption of new therapies into routines. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, so with that, it takes a village because we, we have many arms in our learning health network with developing resources, which I'll focus most of this presentation on tonight for you all. Um, we do, we improve clinical care, we conduct research, um, and we um, also disseminate all of our findings to the autism community. Next slide. So I, lo I love sharing this because we work very closely with our family. So we really truly believe in family-centered care and we don't do anything in our network without having the family perspective um, as well as we work closely with um, some self-advocates as well. So I just think this is a nice quote from one of our families. The Autism Learning Health work Network is built off of an autism treatment network that we are currently um, wrapping up this year. So um, I don't think I need to read that. You guys can see that, but um, you can go to next slide, please. So some of the areas of focus that we do in, in Allen is every Allen site strives to provide each family and child optimal health, quality of life, reduction of challenging behaviors. We share network findings and we also conduct research. Um, next slide. The benefits of Allen to the autism community is really providing better care faster, accelerating clinical improvements, engaging more diverse and underserved groups, building a large community of patients, families, clinicians, and scientists with an aligned vision, and ultimately improving outcomes for patients and families. Um, so for us, 
um, we really are focusing on when you have standard research, it usually takes about 17 years for that research to hit practice. In a learning health network, everything we do today hits, hits the care individuals are receiving tomorrow. So it's real time collecting data, analyzing that data to improve the clinical care immediately, and then analyzing the data even more to then standardize that care. Um, and our goal is one day, hopefully all individuals with ASD will have standardized care, regardless of where they go um, for that care. Next slide. So I wanted to spend a few minutes on autism, echo autism. So echo autism is a platform we use. It's an evidence-based telementoring program and it's developed to support, originally it was developed to support community providers. However, we have extended it to families and we use this to engage and disseminate learning. So as I was just mentioning how we want to um, make sure all individuals, regardless of where they're located, get the same standard of care. Um, we disseminate our findings through our ECHO platform. So these community partners improve their ability to better serve their patients in their community um, that have ASD, and then they can refer the more medically complex kiddos to um, the subspecialist. So it allows families to get more care immediately and providing the tools to their providers. One thing I do want to mention though is with Echo Autism, our center at Nationwide Children's Hospital in Columbus, Ohio, um, once the pandemic started, they started a family Echo Autism. It's a really great program. Um, right now, they're redoing a curriculum to be able to have another session. Um, so this program connects you with a team of experts to learn about and discuss topics such as improving and ma managing behaviors, self-care, family support, and resources. And it allows you to learn from home. So you have... Um, you have the ability to join it via Zoom. It's a 60 minute session each week and you really learn from subject matter experts and learn best practices about topics related to children with de developmental disabilities, including autism. So um, we can, I'm sure there's a way we can share the link to this so that you have an opportunity to save it and sign up for when they open up uh, registration for the next session. Next slide. And again, this is just another quote from one of our family partners. And I love this quote. It's very meaningful to help community providers improve their understanding of the family experience with autism. Family center care is critical for quality care. And I feel like my experience and voice make a difference. And that's from one of our FAC members, which is our family advisory committee. And it really hits home to us because that is the goal. You know, you all know your, your children the best. And we really need to work with the families to be able to identify and provide and improve the care that they're receiving. Um, right now, what, one thing we are focused on is um, reducing challenging behaviors in anxiety, irritability, and ADHD and autism. So our clinicians are working right now to develop these clinical pathways to be able to um, a screen and then assess for anxiety, ADHD, and irritability and autism. And then that will allow us to identify treatments and interventions for those individuals and collect, again, collect data on that, analyze the data, and then um, disseminate it and standardize it. So I'm sure a lot of you can understand the importance of this. And this is all due to our family partners. They sat in a meeting two years ago and they were like, we don't care about X, Y, and Z. We want to be able to take our child out to dinner. And challenging behaviors, really, they pushed it. The clinicians, leadership supported it. And then our data supported it as well, that that was a huge need in the autism community. So that's our current focus. Next slide. So in our network, we uh, do a lot of, we spend a lot of time on developing resources. So we have 23 toolkits right now for the ATN and from the ATN and AIRP um, network. And these are all available on the Autism Speaks website. They are translated into different languages. They're all translated in Spanish and then a subset are translated into 
Arabic, French, and um, a few other languages. So they're all found on the Autism Speaks website. Um, next slide. So uh, what we've also done is we've heard back from families and providers that the toolkits are great. However, they're really there's a lot to them. They're they're long and um, there's a lot of information. So in the past year, we've really have focused on developing some toolkit one pagers. And we started with the areas to support the work we're doing in Allen with anxiety, irritability, and ADHD. So right now we have one pagers on behavioral health treatment, anxiety, irritability, visual schedules, and sleep. So these are like quick key points that um, you can take away from the toolkit. And then if you need more information, you can obviously download the whole toolkit. Um, so with this, these are also available on the Autism Speaks website. You just go to the toolkit you're interested in. And if there's a one pager available, it will be on that page with the, the toolkit. And we look forward to continuing developing more one pagers as we move forward. Next slide. Another great thing we're really excited about is we started working on short video toolkits for you all. So um, we have them on our YouTube page, the ATN slash AARP YouTube, um, or you can also find them on the Autism Speaks pages, again, with the toolkit. So if a toolkit video exists, it will be on the same page as the toolkit. So as you can see here, we have two videos for sleep, bedtime routines, and sleep habits, two visual support toolkits, first then, and visual schedules, two behavioral health treatment tool video toolkits, it's the ABCs of behavior and then reinforcement and one medication uh, video toolkit for medication and pill swallowing. So they're about five minutes each and some of them are translated in Spanish and we look forward to having the opportunity to translate the other ones over the next year. Again, you can find those on the same page when you go to the Autism Speaks website for toolkit. Next slide. The other thing, so this year looking at our current network, so um, we're comprised of 20 centers across North America. We have 18 in the US and two in Canada. Um, our reach covers the whole country and then we do have international reach as well, especially through our Echo Autism platform. Um, one thing I do wanna mention that I, we don't have on one of these slides is we provide, we also have researcher lay language summaries for the research that has been conducted in our network. And you can find those on the Autism Seeks website website as well. So, so we've converted the research into simple language for those that don't have the same expertise as the researchers to be able to easily read um, what research has been conducted. And they're also um, combined under certain domains. So like if you're looking to understand what research occurred for obesity, you can, you can find the lay language summaries there. Next slide. And then here's just a geographic map. And even though you may not have an Allen Center in your community, it doesn't mean you, you won't benefit from the work that we're doing. And we also highly recommend if you have a, a primary care provider who's in your area who says like, I need to learn more about autism, you can connect them with us. Um, and then we can give, him, give that primary care provider the options for echo autism because we do run a whole clinical session for primary care providers, as I was mentioning earlier. Next slide. So thank you, everyone. I appreciate you giving me this time and I will be on if you have any questions. And Marianne and Jenna also have my contact information if anybody needs to shoot me an email for additional information. That was amazing, Angie. Thank you so much. And again, feel free to uh, reach out to us for any questions regarding whether or not a facility is in your area. Uh, if it's not, again, there are a lot of resources available uh, to help support you and your family. Uh, at this time, I'm gonna move on to our amazing autism response team. I, I consider them our frontline workers here at Autism Speaks, and uh, I am going to let them tell you about all of the wonderful resources uh, that they have available and that are here to help you from the time of diagnosis throughout your entire lifespan. So at this time, I'm gonna turn it over uh, to Andrew Nelson, who's the director of autism response team, and JJ Hurley, uh, who's the autism response team associate. Thank you, Janet. 
Thanks so much for having us and for everybody joining tonight. It's really exciting to be able to do this. And um, I direct the Autism Response Team at Autism Speaks. And um, I just wanted to share a little bit. If you've raised a question through either of the first two webinars, we are almost to the end of getting back to everybody. So if you haven't heard from us yet, um, you will probably receive a response tomorrow. Plus, if anybody has questions after today's webinar, we'll follow up with you directly as well. I just wanted to share, if you'll go to the next slide, a little bit about who we are and what we do and kind of give you some context so you can um, reach out to us when you need us. So as you all know, you're here because navigating a new autism diagnosis can be um, a little daunting sometimes. There's a lot of information. It's like one Google click away from a rabbit hole sometimes where you're like, oh my gosh, how do I find information or where do I even begin? And really the form and function of the autism response team is a national call, sign, uh, call center. So we're an information and referral line for the autism community. Um, we're trained as a group, uh, you know, usually about eight of us or nine of us around the country to provide personalized information and resources to anybody who reaches out to us with a question or needing connections to services. So really we hear from, um, we hear from teenagers who reach out to us. We hear from adults. Uh, recently, we helped a 74-year-old person get their diagnosis. We hear from parents, teachers, care providers, physicians, really anyone in the autism community is reaching out to ART on a daily basis. And also many from the international community too. So it keeps us as autism response team members on our toes, um, but we love what we do and we love hearing from you. So let me just share a little bit about how to get connected with us. And then um, our esteemed colleague, JJ, will just share some of the resources that we have around diagnoses and support for you. So really, we have a toll-free number, and it's um, 188-AUTISM2 is the toll-free here. Um, we are nine to five in every time zone across the country. So um, we are able to answer chats, emails, phone calls, and sometimes through our social media pages, people will have questions and we're answering those two on a daily basis. So you can reach us live nine to five in any time zone. And if you're, that doesn't work for your schedule, our email helpline is help at autismspeaks.org. It looks like it came through a little faded there, but um, help at autismspeaks.org is a great way to get your question into the system. And we, on a daily basis, are working um, hard to get through those to be caught up and sharing timely information with everybody. So if making a phone call or a live chat doesn't fit, I really strongly encourage you to email us at help at autismspeaks.org. Um, next slide, please. So there you have it. We answer calls, emails, and chats from people with autism, their family and community members. Um, we provide a critical link with information, tools, and resources for all members of the community. Um, and really that is all members. JJ can attest to that. We um, hear from just about every section of the community. So we'd love to chat with you. Um, we try to provide a person-centered response. So what we try to do is do our best to listen to your needs and help you come up with a plan of attack and action for your needs. So we try not to overwhelm you with too much. We try to give you just enough connections to resources and tools that you feel like you can go back to your life and say, all right, I'm going to call this group. I'm going to email this place and I'm going to check out this website. And so we try to give you um, some tools that you can take from each interaction. And as you all know, the internet and uh, navigating that tangled web can be really challenging. And there's a lot out there, a lot of different voices and resources. So we do our best to provide reliable information to you when you call in, chat, or email with us. Okay, next slide. So we have folks around the country. We are really um, expanding to the West right now. We are in the process of trying to hire two more folks in the West. Um, but we have folks in the San Diego, LA area, Chicago, Cleveland, New York City, DC. Of, uh, of course, JJ is in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Um, we have folks in Miami, Florida. And we try to just personalize those responses. So for the most part, if you call, you will be routed initially to your regional specialist. However, we are all trained through ART to be able to handle any regional question. We have a database where we can search for things by state. And um, we're able to, any one of us, hop into that system and find services and supports for you. So um, I'm going to pass it over to our veteran uh, ART staff, JJ. She's been with us 10 years. She's an absolute pro. And she's going to share a little bit of 
what you could expect from us when you reach out to art, especially around newly diagnosed um, issues. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. And thank you guys for joining us tonight. Um, as Andrew said, I've been an autism response team associate um, for a little over 10 years now. So I've talked to a lot of families and people affected by autism um, personally and professionally. Um, I'm also um, the parent of an almost 16 year old son who has profound autism. So um, I remember all too well when he was two getting that diagnosis and feeling just very overwhelmed. I didn't know anybody who um, had a friend who had a child with autism. It was just very new to me. And, and we had moved to Atlanta just at that same time and barely knew anyone. And I remember, you know, as Andrew mentioned, being that person who got a degree in Google University and um, Googling, and I found um, I found Autism Speaks and I joined a walk, my husband and I and our son, and he was two years old, and that was 2008. And I have um, been volunteering and are working with Autism Speaks in the community since then. So I'm so thrilled with all the resources that we can now offer the community here in 2021. Um, if you're looking at the slide that's currently up, that's a very <laughs> big, big screenshot of all of those toolkits that Angie mentioned that have de been developed by um, the ATN uh, and Alan, and also the ones developed by our science team. And um, they're all evidence-based treatments um, and guides for you as you're looking. So it may be something as simple as, um, not simple, <laughs> none of this is simple, right? But it may be in finding, um, you know, you're needing help with toileting, you're having struggles with that, or um, as Angie mentioned, sleep. Sometimes my son has other medical conditions and he has to get his blood drawn a lot. And so I was so glad when they came out with a blood draw kit, both for the parents and families and people with autism, as well as the phlebotomists that do the draw themselves. So I encourage you guys to go to our website and just put in toolkits in the search bar and it will pull up the whole rigmarole. We have almost, I'd like to say we have a toolkit for almost everything and I think we do. Um, next slide. Okay, and like I said, we don't wanna fall down just the Google rabbit hole. We don't know what's what, um, what has been studied, what has evidence backing it up. There's so many things out there that can just seem very overwhelming, especially if you're a parent to a newly diagnosed child, if you're an adult who just received a diagnosis after many years of kind of questioning and searching. So our website really is um, a wonderful place for you to start. If you look at the slide, the 100 day kit is probably, I'm pretty sure it is our uh, most popular toolkit. Um, and we like to get those to parents within those first six months of getting that diagnosis. And it really acts as that roadmap um, for you to find, you know, this week we can work on um, contacting service providers. Next week, we can work on contacting the school, et cetera. So it gives you um, a kind of place to start it, as Andrew had mentioned. Um, a lot of times uh, when, when people first receive that diagnosis, they want the newly diagnosed kit, but then they also want to know, oh, I've, I've heard about ABA and ST and OT and PT and IEP and all of these letters, I don't know what they mean. So they want to look at treatment options. They want to find out about um, getting an IEP started for their child. Um, wandering prevention resources in the past few years, we have continued to add to our portfolio because that is so important in our community and, and creating a safety plan for your child and uh, in the home and school and community. And we have resources for all of those for you. Um, another one that was mentioned, um, you know, Angie mentioned that the Allen is really focusing on challenging behaviors. And as we've seen throughout the pandemic, um, you know, these past, I guess, year now almost, that the increase in challenging behaviors has really occurred in our household, households and schools. So we want to encourage you to reach out for those um, challenging behavior resources as well. Next slide. Okay, for our adult community, because as Janet or Marianne said way back at the beginning, we are here for you for the entire lifespan. Um, so we have a huge section of adult resources, employment, housing, getting that diagnosis or where to go to get a diagnosis and knowing your rights. Um, we encourage you to reach out to us at the Autism Response Team if you have trouble navigating the website sometimes. I feel like we have so many great resources for adults 
Um, so we'd be happy to direct you in that area. We'd also be, you know, when you reach out to the autism response team, we're not just going to give you the general information, which we will, but then we're also going to dial it down and help connect you there in your community. So I encourage you to reach out and contact me or, or one of my other awesome colleagues. Next slide. So recently we started two new Facebook closed group, closed Facebook groups, I guess is how it's worded. Um, the first one I want to tell you about that I think will be very important for this audience is the navigating a new diagnosis. Um, so this is open to parents, grandparents, people with autism who just got a diagnosis. Um, we want to really help build this safe and secure um, network where you can reach out, hey, I got a question, you know, my kid's doing this and I'm having some issues and having other people chime in and share those resources of things that work for you. So I wish this had been around when, <laughs> when my son Jackson was diagnosed. So I think this is great and I encourage you all to, to meet us there and join this group. And uh, next slide. And the other group that we started is called Adulting on the Spectrum, Come As You Are. And um, it is moderated by adults on the spectrum. Um, it is a safe place, again, for you to network, socialize, share resources, get connected and make some friendships with other adults on the spectrum. Um, so again, that if you um, go on to the, click on the link when this is sent out to you, you'll be able to find that. And then, you can go on to the last slide. That's just, again, how to reach us. As Andrew said, we are here. We're here to help you um, make sure that you, you know, take our information and save it so we can help guide you following these next steps and, and get you the resources that you need. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, JJ. See, I told you guys that the autism response team, they are just simply amazing. And uh, we appreciate all that they do and continually do for our community. So, uh, I am going to turn it over to Ms. Colleen Shen, who is our outreach director, and she's going to just share some uh, final words, and we're going to jump right into our Q&A. And so, uh, Colleen, if you would, please jump in and share some information um, about our outreach team really quickly, and then we'll jump right into Q&A. Sure. Thanks, Janet. So, um, thanks again, everybody, for joining us. Um, I just really wanted to describe what the outreach team does um, and really the role of each of the directors you can see we're all listed here and our boss Lindsay Nader is also at the top. Um, you know our role really is to increase the mission delivery that we provide by providing information about Autism Speaks and the resources available through our services and support team. We're really glad that you joined this webinar because we find a lot that people don't realize all the resources that Autism Speaks really does have. So we do this now currently through virtual webinars uh, and hopefully once we enter a post-COVID status, we're gonna have optional in-person meetings as well. Uh, our virtual webinars really are also focusing on a new topic called workplace inclusion now. Um, we know that adults with autism are employed at alarmingly low rates. We, we also know that global estimates of unemployment and underemployment range as high as 80 to 90% in this community. And we also know that autistic individuals employment is traditionally below their capabilities and they really fare worse than people with other disabilities. And despite promising developments in recent years, this really hasn't significantly changed for decades. So as an organization, Autism Speaks is committed to changing these statistics and providing meaningful employment opportunities across the spectrum, which is very important to us in our communities. So the goal of workplace inclusion now, or what we reference as WIN, as an acronym, um, is to help individuals with autism and intellectual and or developmental differences gain the skills needed to secure and maintain jobs while also supporting the employer's efforts to create working environments that are conducive to those on the spectrum. And by doing this, we're really engaging three stakeholder groups and we're going to equip people, we're gonna activate employers and we're going to engage communities. So main objectives of these initiatives that we're really striving for are to increase awareness and education about inclusive workplaces. We want to provide opportunities, support, and guidance to organizations that are seeking to employ autistic individuals. And we also want to support professionals, caregivers, and families to empower autistic job seekers. And we'll also promote our Autism Speaks faith-based initiative, which is hot off the presses, called Blue Blessings. Um, this is really exciting. Blue Blessings is a year-round approach to making places of worship 
more welcoming and inclusive for adults and families in the autism community. You know, we know sometimes sensory sensitivities, difficulty with social interactions, and also fear of being judged often keep a person with autism and their families from attending any sort of services and faith-based activities. So we actually created a Blue Blessings Guide, which helps to ensure that places of worship are autism friendly, as well as provide access to resources and services available online via our wonderful autism response team, who you just heard from earlier, and through our faith communities. Also, the outreach team is really often that bridge that supports every department at Autism Speaks in advancing our mission. We're really dedicated in helping to build new and current relationships within the community to ensure mission uh, objectives of our organization are met. And our local outreach initiatives of disseminating information and providing education about Autism and Autism Speaks really proves to be a success in increasing that understanding and acceptance of autism, uh, which is a, a part of our, our mission statement. Uh, and we really want that to include all people with autism. That's really important to us. So thanks so much for your attention. I know that um, your time is precious and we're really happy that you chose to spend some of it today. I hope you learned some things on this wonderful webinar. And now I believe we're gonna take uh, a few questions because I think we have like seven or eight minutes. So I'm gonna turn it over to questions. Thanks everyone. Right. Thank you so much, Colleen, for sharing that wonderful information. Uh, it looks like most of our questions um, have been answered. Um, I see here, uh, let's see here, there is an open question. It says for the presentation that was talking about uh, our caregiver skills training, Pam, that would be you. Uh, is that available to download or see offline? So if you wouldn't mind just answering that question, Pam. Sure. Is it um, the materials are available? The E-learning version is not yet available. It's being tested right now and it will be openly available in the fall. Uh, but if there's someone who's interested in seeing the materials, they're not, um, they're not at a place where they can be easily accessed, but I can send some of those materials out. Thank you so much. Do we have any additional questions? Uh, feel free to uh, type them into the Q&A box and we're here to answer them. And also, please remember um, that if you have a question that may be personal or a question that you don't want to share here online, you can reach out to our amazing autism response team uh, at help at autismspeaks.org. Um, they will be sure, sure and help you and provide you with the resources that you need. Pam, I have a question, if that's mm -hmm. okay. Um, so from the uh, locations and facilities where you've done work, have you gotten responses uh, or surveys about how uh, families have found improvements or disappointments? What, what does yeah. the data look like? Thank you for the question. Yes, yeah, so, um, so it's been very well received. Families love the program um, and it is being researched um, by um, very uh, varying levels of intensity, but we have some randomized controlled trials, um, you know, as well as those surveys that are just, you know, kind of qualitative interviews with families. Um, and we are finding that it makes a difference in terms of um, caregivers or parents, uh, stress level, mental health, um, that children are, that they're, they feel that they are capable and able to um, use the skills to create change in their children. Uh, we see some, um, we get, we're getting to the point of seeing some changes in, um, in language in children and in their uh, shared engagement uh, in some of our studies. So, uh, and the research is ongoing. So we're, um, we're looking to see more, but it's been very, uh, very well received. Yes, thank you. I want, uh, that was the answer I was hoping. <laughs> So we hear from so many families that they're on a wait list, as you mentioned, and that, yeah. that is really very hard for them. Uh, so giving them tools that they can do while they wait um, yeah. is, is yeah. terrific. I, I mean, I've used this myself. I know it's been, you know, 25 years since my son was diagnosed, but I remember how kind of hopeless I felt. I just yeah. didn't know what I could do before I, you know, before I was able to right. move all these appointments around. So I actually had some strategies and it makes such a difference for the caretaker. 
Yes, <laughs> if exactly. Not, obviously, the child benefits too, but uh, yeah. even for the caretaker, you, you you feel like, okay, I'm doing something. I'm not just sitting around waiting. So, yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, so we do have some questions here that I want to run by the autism response team. Uh, one person is asking if there are any resources in the Des Moines, uh, uh, Des Moines Iowa area. Uh, and there's a question about uh, whether or not there's an updated 100 day kit and how can they get one. And there is a question about child care, uh, noticing a lot, lack of services in their area. So if you wouldn't mind answering those. Sure. I'll take the Des Moines one first. Um, yes, we definitely do. We have a uh, art associate that's in the Chicago, Illinois area, but also uh, does a lot of work in the Midwest too. So we have in our folders several different Des Moines and um, Iowa resources, depending on what you're looking for. What I would recommend is just if you're comfortable uh, sending an email to help at autismspeaks.org and just in the title line put Des Moines resources and then maybe in the body of the email just list out what you're looking for and we'll get all of that stuff right back to you in an email with links and everything. So that might be the best way to do that is to just um, follow up with us via email and then we can get you a personalized response. But yes, indeed, um, across the lifespan, we have resources in every state. So, um, and if we can't find what you're looking for, we dig and we find it. So <laughs> um, JJ, do you wanna talk about how to access the new 100 day kits? Sure, um, both kits, the uh, 100 day toolkit that was geared towards younger children and early intervention, as well as our school age toolkit, um, which is geared more towards kindergarten um, up through middle school. Those have both been recently updated. So you can go onto the website and you can download them. Um, they're very mobile friendly now. So if you want to read it on your iPad or cell phone, it's so much easier than the original edition was to do that. Um, you can also reach out to the art team. And if you do have a FedEx print and ship center in your area. Um, we have a program with them where they can print out a hard copy for you to go pick up. So again, um, I would love for you to send an email or call us at the art team because when people do reach out, you're totally welcome to download it on your own from the website. But if you reach out to us, we'll also send you some state specific and uh, regional specific resources too. Okay, and then the last question that we have time for is, uh, and, and I do have a question here, but it's a personal question. I'm gonna direct that question directly to the autism response team. So thank you so much for providing that. But uh, they were asking a question about uh, child care facilities uh, and the lack of resources in their area. So if you can address that. Sure. That? Uh, go yeah, ahead. go ahead, JJ, and I'll, I'll read the other one in the chat box. <laughs> okay. Um, you are not alone, friend who is typing in, because we have so, we hear that so frequently from our families, the lack of childcare. We, as a response team, are constantly digging for those resources. So I would love for you to reach out to us. Um, a lot of times, as we, we have found that there are um, early childhood providers that are interested in having some training um, to better assist them in helping with special needs. Sometimes we'll find that child cares will um, advertise that they will work with your special needs child, Well, they'll allow the early, um, the state's birth to three provider to come in and help assist them in that child care setting. Um, sometimes there are waiver programs in your state that can help provide um, with child care resources, but a lot of it is really just kind of digging to see what's in your area, um, because we do know um, that that is definitely a, a huge area where we have a lack of resources for our families, um, especially during this time when we're really needing to utilize that child care. So please reach out to us this week and let us know where you live, okay? All right. Well, thank you all so much. It looks like we are at time. Um, for those of you that had questions uh, that you placed either the Q&A or in the chat box, uh, I have copied those and forwarded them on to the autism response team. So thank you all again so much for joining part one, part two, and tonight's part three <laughs> session. We're so excited. And thank you again uh, for taking our time. We're here if you need us at help at autismspeaks.org. Thank you all and have a great night. Good night. Okay, Be well. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Good Thank night. you, panelists.